some people say that we live in a sinful world, so that's why we're not perfectly made. What is what is if our body is broken, like with any other disabled person, but the mind is correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, what would be your argument? Like, okay. So what what would it be that if I if our body is the, is the issue, not if our mind is the issue, but not our body? I would say that our body is testified to multiple sources of. Um, I think people can be confused in their mind about a ton of stuff, but our body is testified to our biology, our gender is testified to by multiple strains of evidence, you know, and, and one of those is scientific evidence. Oftentimes as Christians, we, we, we kind of run away from the scientific evidence as if it's not spiritual enough or something like this, but, but this is part of John, uh, John's, this is part of God's general revelation. It's not self knowledge, but it still lends testimony to who we are and the way the world really is. And part of that is, is how we're made. We are made, yes, in the image of God, spiritual reality, but we're also made male and female, scientific, physical reality. And we, and we don't change that. And we don't, and, and my question back to that would be, why is it ever, except, why would, why are we going through so many lengths to, to, uh, to, to mutilate our bodies and the bodies of our children, but not alter our minds? I mean, now here in California, we have legislation prohibiting uh, the, the counseling of, of even unwanted uh, same-sex attractions, for example. In Canada, Bill C-3, another thing that I've spoken on, I think I've spoken on it here on To the Point. You know, we have these, uh, or C-4 rather, we have these things, these these passages and these, these things of legislation that are now prohibiting the altering of the mind and not the body. Somehow the body is what needs to be changed. And I say it's the opposite because the body is part of it. it it's part of the fundamental reality of who we are. And so we should first try to change the minds. We're also, we're also told that through the scriptures, it's the renewing of our minds that we're constantly doing. Like we're constantly on the transformation through our mind. So I, I, I'm trying to think of an example of where altering the body, um, maybe in a, di a disabled function, but relating also this to relating the transgender stuff to disabled people. Like, uh, I'm, I'm good friends with this guy, Nick Vujicic. He's got no arms and legs, right? That's the way that he, he, he was born. It wasn't due to accident or anything like this, but we also know that, that he is this way he's disabled. And what does that mean? That means he, he is, uh, born in such a way that, uh, he is not able to perform the normal everyday function of people who are normal in, in that sense, physically, physically normal, at least. So when somebody is disabled, their, uh, their body is changed in such a way that does not line up with the way it's supposed to be. So, and that's not true of a transgender person, their body functions perfectly normal according to how they were designed. I hope I'm communicating that appropriately, but, um, but relating transgender issue to, and, and getting, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 alignment, realignment surgery to a disabled person. Well, I was born sin in, in a sinful world. My body is, is not as it ought to be, but what you're doing in a realignment surgery is you're, you're removing, uh, presumably at least you're removing, uh, part of your anatomy that is functioning, a uh, functioning according to its telos, its meaning, its purpose in order to pursue something that's in your mind. And I say that the natural, the, the, the way that we should be doing it is, is the opposite. We should be transforming our minds to um, point to the greater reality or another reality of our physical nature. We don't have perfect bodies. We have disease and we seek to overcome those disease, but notice the the imperfections are imperfections with our body. We know that they're wrong. There's something that's preventing our body from performing its natural, nat the, it, it, it's, its purpose, its true purpose. Gender reassignment and, and trans stuff the, the, it seeks to do the opposite. We're taking perfectly functioning parts. The Bible never, as far as I can, as far as I'm aware, you guys can educate me. It doesn't, doesn't instruct us on changing a fundamental component of who we are. It doesn't ever mention going from male to female. Our, our gender, our maleness or femaleness is sacred, just as is our race. And to violate that is to, is to cause great harm. Um, I think it's, 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 um, it's also, and this is a whole nother talk and I don't have time to get into it right now, but it's all linked to image of God's stuff. And that's, that's ultimately where we ground things. You know, God made us special and unique. Yes. In his image. And that, that, that's our, our soul, right? He gives us our soul. It's special, but he also created us, he knit us together in our mother's wombs. And it's part of a fundamental component of who we are, our maleness and females. Yes. There's a spectrum. Not, not everybody is, is, is ex experiences or expresses their maleness the same. I mentioned this, right? 
Some kids like like uh, Tonka trucks and and Tostitos. Other other kids like dolls and Doritos. Like it doesn't. That's not what dictates our preferences in in, in that regard. And those things don't dictate our maleness or femaleness. Um, but it's part of our design. You know, it's not up to us ultimately. <laughs>